Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, the only way to win a season is just to capture the dragon? Have you ever been told this by other people? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you and explain how there are multiple ways to win a KVK season. We're going to discuss it, and we're going to show you probably the most important data that you're ever going to need to know, which is hearing from the top representatives from the top and active alliances from season two and beyond, and actually get their thoughts on, do they even think that there's multiple ways to win a season? So stay tuned, and as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you give us up, because it helps out a lot. So let's first show you the answer from our State of the Game questionnaire that we asked the King's Guard. Now, if you're wondering, boss, who is the King's Guard? Well, the King's Guard is a, uh, it's a group that I have on my Discord. It's a collection of representatives, one per alliance, from season two and beyond, and they have to be in a top and active alliance based on power thresholds for each of the seasons that we kind of scale from early all the way to later seasons. And you see here we got 84 responses of about 120 or so, so a little about 30, a little over uh, two thirds of responses that we got from members of the King's Guard. And these could be any, anyone from leaders, co-leaders, or officers, right, appointed representatives for those alliances. Now, what's interesting about this data is that and I'm, I'm going to tell you something really cool at the very end, is that one of the things that I heard, because I did a video uh, before we did this questionnaire, and the video I did was covering uh, KVK season in, in uh, T1, and I talked about how I felt that there was multiple ways to win a KVK season, not just limited only to capturing Dragon. And there was pushback from some, which basically was that no boss, the only way to win is to capture Dragon. And then others understood where I was coming from on how you can have different victory conditions for a KVK season. And so I thought to myself, let me just ask a larger pool of people and people that are representing the top and active alliances, once again, from season two and beyond. And you'll see here on this answer that the number one most voted for victory condition, which basically proves my point, is that... There are more ways than just one to win a KVK season. And the most voted one is, the, is a war victory, which is basically pushing out the enemies from the final zone and then holding dragon, right? So it's push them out, then get dragon. It's not cap dragon and hold. It's, it's, that's how you do it. Now, the second most is an objective victory, which is capture and hold, but you could still be fighting in the FZ, right? And then the third most voted one is a stalemate or a victory draw condition. And this basically means no one captures the dragon due to continuous fighting in the FZ. Now those to me I feel like are the three most likely things that can happen. I'm sure we could maybe think of a few more here and there. But those are the three ones that came to mind for me. We also gave people an opportunity to provide others. And uh, I'm trying to see here, mix of objective and war. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else because I know we did cover this a little bit. Uh, fighting and having fun is the victory. I mean, hey, I could have put that as an option too. Um, diplomacy, diplomacy wins 90% of the time. Uh, as long as you're a dragon, you win. In my opinion, the one of the season are the ones that have the most fun uh, and uh, the best after season recruitment. I think actually that's a really good point too as well. Um, winning the season is subjective, but the uh, dragon's part of your alliance had fun and grew because they wanted uh, to join you even though you didn't get dragon. Your alliance is one in the end. Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to lose people. You want to kind of stay at your same activity level or gain individuals. Uh, and all enemies pushed to zone one. Okay, so see, we could have done like other things, right? Where it's like, okay, do you need to push them out of final zone and zone two? Like, do you need to push them all the way back to their zone one? I, I personally think that's a little excessive. So... For me, it's just, look, did you not allow them in the final zone? Like, I think that's bare minimum. And what I thought was interesting about the data is that almost 70% of the people, we had 10 more votes for a war victory over an objective victory, but you still had almost 10%, eight people that voted on this that felt that, hey, a stalemate victory or draw condition, uh, win condition, uh, or condition, we'll say, right, is, is eligible as well. And... Then this kind of takes me back to this idea of, okay, we're in final zone, and you, as the alliance, because my whole thing was this, was you're in the final zone, and, and I'll tell you really what stemmed it for me. Like, this is, what, and, and I'm curious if you've heard this, or if you've seen people talk about this before, is when I'm reading through world chat, 
in in this particular T1 season that I was doing. I think it was like TFS, RR, BXS, EIS. I think that might have been the matchup there. And one of the things that I saw constantly in this world chat was people talking about how, oh, we won, the season's over, right? Oh, you know, you guys have lost, you don't have Dragon, etc. And part of that was a big factor for me on how, and again, now I'm not saying every single person from every alliance was doing this back and forth, but there was a number of people that were involved in this world chat dialogue uh, discussion or posting, if you will, or statements that were being thrown. And I just thought to myself, man, like, part of it just didn't, not to say it didn't make sense, but part of it was like, man, like, they're, it, it's just the way they're going about it and how they're almost trying to minimize it uh, to something that is just so black and white when really, in my view, it just wasn't. And that's why I felt uh, a, a big fire, if you will, just to talk about how the situation is a little bit more complex and diverse than some may think it is. And that led me to go on and talk about how I just felt, again, that there was just multiple ways to win a season. And so I'm curious for you out there, again, do you agree... Can you see, can you understand how there can be multiple victory conditions? Or are you more hardlined and you're on the side of the fence where, listen, man, it doesn't matter as long as I have as long as we hold Dragon at the end, it doesn't matter if they're pushed out of the FZ or not, right? We won the season. And this is for all of me. And again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Outside of like, do you agree with the King's Guard? Do you do you can you see how they're how they view it as leaders, co-leads, and representatives for Again, the top and active alliances in the game from season two and beyond. Or do you have a different view? Because I'll tell you for me, my whole thing was that I just didn't see how people could be so... Because this is my thing. It's like in the season that I covered, it was pretty much a 50-50, right? So like the territory split, and I'll give you an example here, right? Just to really kind of hammer home my point, hopefully, is if we look at like the territory split for this. And let me scoot this over a little bit. Right there. Here we go. So the territory split. So like just, I'll, I'll, let me do a black line. We'll do a black line. So just imagine like, I'm just going to do like the middle. And this is obviously, um, um, forgive. But you, you know where I'm coming from. So the idea is like this, right? It's like on one side, on one side you had this. And on the other side, you pretty much had this. Right, so it was, it was, it, and this is in the T1 map, right? So this is in the, um, uh, in the Tamara season one or the T1 season map, and they were basically fighting at like these three choke points, right? So you had like, like, let's just imagine you have a choke here, a choke here, a choke here, right? And they're fighting at these choke points, but no one's really making any overwhelming ground on one side or the other, and it was just, I guess for me, the way I took it was that I was shocked. That's probably more of an appropriate word. That some sides, like the side that held Dragon, for some people that were saying this, were just like so overwhelmingly confident about like, oh, we won, you guys lost, we're the winners, you're the losers. And it was just like, it was just the level of confidence and to almost a point of like where it almost came across like arrogant, right? Like it was just a level of cockiness. And... To me, it's like, and I, I, listen, I'm very much uh, a proponent of like, dude, be humble. It's just like, it's going to get you so much farther in life in general. Um, and that's not to say that I'm against any kind of competitive banter. But there's a big difference between competitive banter uh, or friendly competitive banter, however you want to refer to it, and just like, you know, like being arrogant in, in general. And some of the posts I saw came across like this. And I'm sure some of you have maybe seen stuff like that happen too as well. And to me, it was just like, I mean, sure, you might have held Dragon, but, like, are you really, like, winning the entire war? And my thing was like, look, you know, that's cool if you want to, if, if you're saying that you're winning the season off of holding Dragon in the end, and I have nothing wrong with that claim. But let's just not make it seem like it's more than that, right? And this was more of, like, a capture and hold situation rather than it was, like, we have really pushed everyone out and we've beaten this alliance like we've overpowered this alliance or we've tactically and strategically have beaten this alliance to where our alliance is overall better we're more skillful um right our our quality uh our strategy is just so much better than theirs 
right? Like we out IQ'd them, so to speak. Like it wasn't any of that, uh, right? When you're talking about it kind of being this 50 50 split on territory. And that's where my stance was coming from as it pertained specifically, once again, right, to a war victory. And to me, if I was to like rate where I value victories on, you could still make an argument that like every condition or every you know victory condition is equal. For me personally, I value a war victory more than I do an objective victory, right? So if I had to like list my order of priority, it would be like war victory one, objective victory two, and then like stalemate draw victory three, right? Um, I mean, I might even argue to an extent that I might even put in a that I might even put the stalemate victory at two. Oh, and the reason I say that. <laughs> is because you'd have to be fighting nonstop and you'd have to be aware of when someone is trying to push and cap or trying to capture dragon to where you're constantly interrupting them. Like, I, I mean, to me, that almost feels like more of a, of a situation than like we built to this, we built to these choke points, we defended, we captured dragon, right? Because we didn't, you know, like to that kind of a thing. And I'm saying because there's constant fighting compared to, defending and holding, having some advantages as a defender, and then basically creating a window of opportunity to capture Dragon. Like, yeah, I understand that you're fighting on the choke point overall. But like, and again, I don't know, again, if you guys feel that that makes sense to you uh, or not, that's okay, right? Again, that's just my view. That's my take. I'm okay with anyone that, again, you have your own opinion for how you view it. To me, that's just kind of how I would prioritize it as far as for me and what I feel would have the most value that I want to see, right? That I would like to see from a viewership standpoint when KVK is happening. And so again, you know, would love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, I don't think this is, I don't think these are hot takes at all per se, but uh, again, other people may feel differently and that's fine, right? Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So, but again, I, I like to be able to give you guys a deep dive into not only what my views are, because I think it's important for creators uh, and I would just say for myself to be able to tell you how I really think about things. And to be able to provide a to be able to provide a reasoning and explanation to why I think that way, so you can get more of an insight into kind of how my clock ticks, and you know hopefully it can incite you know, a good discussion, right? Or hearing from people on if they agree or disagree, and, and why or why not. And I think that it's always a great way to have this kind of continued dialogue and conversation within the community because it also allows for us to kind of push things forward. So I'm always going to be a fan of that. That's going to do it for me. As always, until next time, I'll catch y'all later.